I have some new stuff to play with. I have some old stuff to play with. I'm just gonna go through some stuff in the testing drawer right now. My goal is to sometime in the next week have a reckoning with the stuff in the testing drawer. There is some new stuff that's come in. I'll just never see the bottom of that testing drawer again, will I? It's, it's a whole different beast now. We something brand new that came in the mail just now. The Urban Decay Face Bond Foundation. I got the shade five. <laughs> scared. I did swatch it on the back of my hand. It seems okay. We're really gonna have to hope that that yellow in my neck really comes through <laughs> whenever I apply this. Before I do that, I have lip balms from Finding Ferdinand that they sent me. That was crazy. <laughs> these are the delicious balms, which I think these are like limited edition as limited edition as Finding Ferdinand can because you can also like do hex codes on their website. But they sent me these three like pinky red lip balms. And they all have different scents. So this one's my favorite. It's the shade Lucky Cat. It's my favorite because it's purple. So that's that one. And it smells like Asian pear. That's what it says it smells like. And then I also have this shade Photoshoot Red. It smells like black cherry. That one smells the best in my opinion. The one I gave to Tiff was like hot pink and I was like, I won't wear this. So I just was like, you can have it. <laughs> but I'll put this on. I haven't actually worn these too much. Consider this a first impression. They're a very thin balm. So if you're into a thin balm, you might like these. They're really pretty. They smell good. I like that Finding Ferdinand, I don't know if it's because of khaki, but it feels like khaki had some influence with like playing around with scents for limited edition collections. I think that's really smart. I really like them. These bullets are pretty killer. The top is plastic, but this part's metal and they're branding. It's pretty chic. I don't really like the way the Asian pear one smells. We have a lot of lip product. Should I, I don't know. It just feels like so weird to put on like a red for like a lip balm at the beginning of the video. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna refrain from doing that. So I think I told you that Urban Decay asked if they could send this to me and then they did. I wasn't sure if I was gonna get it because this already came out and they were very like, don't tell anyone in the email. And I was like, but now here it is. I am gonna prime my face with the Bobbi Brown since it's been a minute since I did my skincare. Also, Maria's back. Everyone say hi to Maria. If you don't know who Maria is, you're not a real one. You could be a real one, but I'm sure someone in the comment section will tell you who Maria is. And the other reason I wanna empty the testing drawer is like, I'm not only getting like some PR from some brands. It is weird now that I'm like a little bit in this. Sometimes just things show up. We will be applying this <laughs> with the sponge they sent me with it. And this is the sponge. <laughs> I dampened it and it really grew and grew and grew. If you're new here, I don't typically apply my foundation with a sponge, but they sent a card and they said that fingers would give you full coverage. They said that a brush would give you medium coverage and they said a sponge would give you the least amount of coverage. I'm not looking for a lot of coverage. I feel like my skin's looking pretty good right now. I mean, I did cut myself twice on my eyebrow. There's no agitator or anything in this, but the packaging is pretty sleek. It's a, it's like, I would say it's like a little bit bigger than credit card size. I mean, like, obviously it's not the size of a credit card, but in my brain, it's very much designed to like be on the go. Like it feels like something that would be really easy to pack. It's not taking up a lot of space. Flammable until dry. You're not using your fire flame or heat. Okay. Uh, there is a fluid ounce in here though. You know, that's the fun thing about packaging is that that's a fluid ounce, 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 that's a fluid ounce. You know, we have everything. All of these things are a fluid ounce. It is a dropper and this pulls off. It doesn't twist. So there you go. It's actually very aesthetically pleasing. I will give that to Urban Decay. Historically, I have gotten along pretty well with Urban Decay. Although this one is certainly designed to be matte. It's a pretty thick formula. It's holding its own there on the palette. And it has like the look of a matte product. You know what it's kind of reminding me of? And I never really owned this product, but we used to have it in store. The cover effects had a foundation that was like this, that was like a soft matte. So let's see. Ooh, okay. Okay, let's just blend that in. I've had yellower foundations work for me. It matches the neck. It's okay. Like my face is really pink, but my neck is a little more yellow. Honestly, so here's, sorry, with foundation? No foundation? Okay. It also kind of is funny because this kind of looks like it's meant to be a skin tint. And I just released my video of the review of the Lisa Eldridge skin tint. I mean, I don't think it's at all the same thing the way it's applying, but it's like got the vibe. I feel like I'm using a lot of it, but 
when things don't have a pump, I have to go rogue and it's, you know, I just make up all the rules and it's not, it's not really right. I really like a pump. Although again, not all products have to come in a pump. It's just like my, my preference for most things. And I also include skincare in it. If you give me something in a tub and it's skincare, I'm using that bitch up like so fast because it's like you've allowed me to make my own choices about how much of this I need. I can't say I like the shape of the sponge. It's so big. It's so just like I don't look at it like that. It's like that's it next to my face. Face for scale. Sean Mendes for scale. I mean some points were made. Like that's pretty stunning. It's doing something a little bit weird under this eye but that could just be crusties from my eye. And it also could just be that the sponge isn't really something that I feel like I can get very pinpointed. I have, you know, some redness on my cheek here. I'm gonna just see if I can apply a little bit more. I'll do, I'll blend some in with my fingers just to see what that looks like, see how it works. I will say I'm already trying to, I keep trying to twist this top off. It looks like it's meant to be twisted because of the shape. That built really well on top of itself. I'm just gonna tap it in a little bit more with the sponge. So this is supposed to be like a, a serum, a powder, all of that all in one. And I will say like, like it feels like it's set. However, I do have a powder I would like to use. They also sent me the all nighter. This might be a shock, but like I've, I've never actually used it. So we'll finish off with that today. I am going to mow my lawn after this video is filmed. So I'll let you know, I'll keep you posted. Probably not in this video, but I'll report back. Although mowing the lawn for me, I'm not really good at it. So it, I don't really exert that much energy, but I'm very glamorous when I do it, aren't I? In a full beat. Where do I want to go from here? I don't know if I want to contour. I'm okay kind of leaving it because I'm trying to put as much stuff on my face that I feel like I need to make a final opinion on. So like we're going to put a couple of different lip colors on today just to run through them really quick. For powder, I actually bought another thing during this for sale and it's this. This is the new Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Pressed Powder. I got the shade uh, Translucent Lights and it comes with this puff and this puff is a little bit weird. Like look at that. I mean, it's not velvet, but it has like the texture of velvet. So weird. Here's why I bought it. My friend Cam, Clove Room, they asked me to review it. What Cam asks for, Cam will get. <laughs> I like Hourglass powders a lot. I love their loose setting powder. The ambient lighting powders aren't really good for my skin type. So I like them, but like they don't make my skin look the best after a little bit of wears. So I'm hoping, because I do prefer a pressed powder, I'm hoping that I'll really enjoy this. I haven't reviewed an Hourglass product in a while since their ambient light foundation, and I did not like that. However, I know that they do powder well. And considering this isn't a powder that's supposed to have like that lighting effect, I feel confident, <laughs> maybe a little bit too confident in their ability to do this. So I'm going to take my Ruffer 30 brush and I'm going to sweep it onto my face. We're going to see like what it does as far as like coverage and blur goes. Oh wow. It actually really blurred this side of my face. I feel like my pores are almost imperceptible. So no powder, powder. It also has a little bit, I don't know if it's like actually the powder, but I feel like the foundation looked a little more matte before I put this on. So there might be like something a little bit sheeny in there, but not glittery. It is really pretty. Okay, Hourglass, maybe, maybe I can trust you with this powder, but so far so good. Here's the compact. It is their plastic compact. I thought maybe they might release it in a tin. I don't know if the pan's removable. It looks like it could be. So I'll I'll give it a I'll give it a, a gentle try, a gentle nudge. Nope. It's glued. <laughs> it's glued. <laughs> Hopefully that that sticks again. So what my hope was that was that they would release this in like the the tins that they've been releasing the holiday releases in and they made this magnetic and refillable but they didn't. So it is like the traditional really light packaging but I think in the case of a powder I think that's okay because uh, like a, a setting powder or like a touching up powder it, it's something you're probably going to throw in your bag or something that you'll want to be lighter for travel reasons so I'm okay with it I don't really need like the powder puff that's not really where I go so like that's kind of wasted space for me but for s's and g's we'll press it into this side of my face I would say there's a little bit of coverage happening with this but I didn't buy the one that's supposed to be translucent. So I knew that this was going to have a little bit of coverage, but 
Oh my god. Oh wow. All right. Okay. Wow. We're having a really good testing day, aren't we? More the powder. The foundation feels good so far, but it gives like a little bit of a dime a dozen product with like this soft matte finish. Like I compared to that Cover FX product, and that's something that already exists. I think they call it their Power Play foundation. Urban Decay is really relying on some like bonus point words in their marketing for that, but like it's nice. But hmm. Interesting. I obviously will want to play with this with a brush and my fingers too. Let me know if you want like a detailed video like I did with the Lisa Eldridge one on that foundation because I can do that but I have a feeling that most of you aren't going to be really interested in that foundation. Uh, it's fun for me to play with but like if there's an overwhelming response where people are like I really want the details of that then we will do it but then you also have to watch it. <laughs> my Lisa Eldridge video is doing fine. That wasn't a read on anyone not watching that. It's just you know you make a request and then I also make a request. For bronzer, I'm just gonna use my Victoria Beckham bronzer. I just don't feel like contouring today. So we're just skipping that step. Okay, I will say this, the Urban Decay Foundation didn't really get caught in my product gutter under my eye. So I will say that. I mean, I'll have to wear it some more, but like so far, I don't know, we're really, I don't know. I'm like, I wasn't expecting either of those things to go as well as they did and then they both went really well. And I was like, well, now I can't complain. And that's something I really love to do on this channel. All right, let's revisit some stuff from Sigma because I do just want to like make my final decisions on all the Sigma stuff that they sent me. So these two things I haven't really played with in my free time at all because they're just not my colors really. I have played with this a little bit more. This is the cream blush in Pashmina. I also have their regular powder blush in Tiger Lily. I'm just going to layer them. I don't think I've tried to put this on top of powders yet. So I'm gonna give that a whirl real quick and see if it plays well. Yep! Just like a Sigma product does. It's really just... it says hold my beer. I should say this now, I'm not really sure that all of these products are gonna look good together at the end. It's this is like very much like a like I'm like playing with makeup. And then I'm just gonna layer the Tiger Lily blush on top because it is a little bit shiny, so maybe I can forego a highlighter. Ananda, as you may recall, Ananda sometimes sends me some treats, sends me some goodies. And she sent me some stuff from Vive. A lot of lip products. Another Merit Signature Lip, but it is one of the old formulas. But it's in Lavenue, which I don't know if that's the one that's limited edition or that's the red that they always have. But I'm curious to wear it. I feel like Ananda really wants me to wear a red lip. She sends me so many red lip products. <laughs> she's like, I think she's just like, I want this for you. I want you to be a red lip person. And it's funny because it's like, I would like for me to be a red lip person too. And I just don't know that I am. But I'm excited to try it nonetheless. I mean, we can forgo highlighter just for the sake of this video. I'm going to revisit the Basic Witch Palette from Bella Beauté Bar, which has definitely gotten featured the most out of the eyeshadow palettes that I've gotten in PR recently. I mean, there's kind of a reason for that. It is my favorite one to play with. Like it's, I just like it a lot. And they are sending me their new palette. I just got an email from them that they were sending it to me, which is really exciting because I think I like that color story better than this one. So I'm excited to play with that, but I'm also very into this too. What I want to do today is I want to play with like the grungy colors because I feel like every time I've opened this palette, I've gone into the pinks. So I want to use the yellow and I want to use the green. And I do want to use this Coven shade and maybe I'll use a little bit of the Black Cat shade. And then I think this Resting Witch Face shade, well, I think it looks like I've used that. I want to use one of the other shimmers that I really haven't gotten into yet. That's what I'm really looking forward to. I'm a little bit inspired. I, I don't know how old this look is, but Andromeda posted a look where they used like the like grungy green and grungy yellow, but I really liked what they did with it. So I'm not going to look up the image, but this is inspired by them. <laughs> They'll know. And if you follow Andromeda's career with any interest, you might know the look that I'm talking about. And then hopefully after this video, uh, the stuff you've seen me pull out every time I've gone into the testing drawer will be handled and like what you'll see going forward will be like newer stuff. <laughs> so newer to me stuff that isn't this stuff. I just like, I just feel like I was I just really wanted to get into the nitty gritty of it, as I always do. I want to like, I want to play with this again. I want to play with this again. Child is always asking for more. We have to be doing something already or having something already in order for us to have more of it. And he'll just be like, more. It's like, okay. I don't feel like I'm being heard, but you know, whatever, whatever you need. 
me and Tiff referenced this one thing that happened on Drag Race. It's season 14. So it's the season that Georges is on because the quote's from Georges. And there, it's a, it's from a, it's literally the, what she, she says it's in a mini challenge. I don't think that anyone else in like people who like Drag Race really think about this all the time. But we, we quote it consistently and constantly. And like the thing was they had to like take a balloon and like pop it on one of the pit crew. It's very sexual. Pop like kind of like essentially hump the pit crew <laughs> to like pop the balloon to see what team they were on. Because it was full of it was kind of like a gender reveal thing. Oh god. Explaining drag race to people who don't watch it is tough. It's a tough task. But I'm here to try. I'm gonna use this Sigma E36 brush and I'm gonna go into the shade Grimoire. It's the yellow. And I'm gonna like keep that focus out here. Georges is having trouble getting the balloon to pop. And RuPaul's like, are you having trouble? And she just goes, I'm just a little girl. <laughs> and like it takes her for a really long time to pop it. The joke is for you straight people, is that the Georges probably doesn't top. Also, Georges made that joke about themselves about herself. You know, I think that top bottom jokes are tired. That I'm just a little girl is so funny to me. I really, it really tickles my funny bone. And then I kind of want the yellow to be here, but I want it to be a little more washed out. I'm going to switch brushes. I haven't really been playing with the Sigma brushes that they sent me too much. I like it. It looks like I'm sick. Are there any like quotes from a show that you watch, but like no one actually quotes the thing that you're quoting? Like, you know how like whenever people watch Shit's Creek, everyone just starts saying like, ooh, David. Like, you know, that's like where people really like, that's where their, their journey starts. It's like, ooh, David. And I can't think of anything from Shit's Creek right now that wouldn't be that. But like fold in the cheese, you know? But is there any shows that you watch that everyone else watches, but you quote something that no one else ever quotes <laughs> from that show. Am I making sense? Because I just feel like no one says, I'm just a little girl. And there was a scene in Glee where Finn was talking to the guidance counselor. And I swear to God, it would have worked so well if he just said, but I'm just a little girl. But that wasn't, it's not what he said, but he should have. I really like this yellow. I feel like every time I use like one of these yucky yellows, there's something in them that makes them look more like intuitive to the skin which I think is good and I think you know when I think of a brand I have a lot of this kind of color from it's from Natasha Denona which I think Natasha Denona's brand is sometimes pushes color story but she does it in a way that's gonna like feel better for people who are experimenting with these yucky colors but I feel like I'm putting this color on my skin and it's like staying yucky which I appreciate we love that little bit of yuck also I've been wanting to recreate this look since Andromeda posted it and like and here I am probably like three months later, but it was so pretty. Just kind of lived in my mind rent free for a while. So now I'm going to go into Coven, which is uh, this like purpley shade. And I don't want to mix it in with the yellow. Purple and yellow are on opposite sides of the color wheel. If they mix, they'll just make a gray color. But I do like them together because they are complementary. And I'm just going to put that like on the inner corner and like blend it up to where my eyebrow would be if I had it. Kind of looking a little bit bruisey, but that's okay by me. I'm probably going to put a shimmer on top of that, but I just wanted something to kind of like go against that yellow. Good luck, babe, has been stuck in my head since Friday. It's my new um, Am I Sad song. So if you don't know about this, you probably don't. You're not my personal friends, but I will listen to the, I used to listen to the song Night Shift by Lucy Dacus every morning as a kind of like, am I sad today? Am I going to cry during Night Shift? And if I cry during Night Shift, normally that meant I was like probably not doing really well mentally. Now it's good luck, babe. It's took, it's taken the place. It's been outdone. Not that I won't ever touch down on Night Shift ever again. I'm just saying, you know, there's a new competition in town and it's, Good luck, babe. Now I'm going to go into a Creep It Real, which is that shade down there. And although I might have to switch brushes, I'm going to take it under my eye and blend it up a little bit into the yellow. Do you have any songs that you listen to whenever you feel like you need to cry? Because I still, I mean, obviously I still listen to Night Shift. I still listen to Stay Away by Muna. Tom's Infinite Playlist is essentially songs like like look at how unwell these colors make me look <laughs> i love it i know that's not everyone's gig but that's kind of like spiritually how i'm feeling after this weekend and so i'm i'm allowing it but we're gonna put a shimmer on i am gonna take the black cat shade and i'm gonna put it with the green 
Now for the shimmer. Does anyone have silicone applicators like this? Bella Beauté Bar sent these to me. How am I supposed to wash them? I feel like I shouldn't spray them with alcohol. Do you think just some water will do? Is that, is that what I'm supposed to do? I don't know. I haven't tried to wash them yet. I think the first attempt will probably be just running them underwater. And then if that doesn't get all the stuff off of them, then I will, I will put back. I also could just, you know, message Bella Beauté Bar and be like, how am I supposed to wash this? And then she'll probably reply. Okay, I think I'm going to use the shade Hocus Pocus, like kind of all over the lid. I think that's going to be the shade I want to use. And I'm going to use a silicone applicator. Ooh, 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 okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's way more pigment. <laughs> that's way more, whoa, whoa. Okay, that had way more base pigment than I was expecting it to. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. See how that brightened it up? It's, I mean, it still looks like I got punched in the face, but that's okay. I did get punched in the face metaphorically this weekend. That color is so pretty and so, it's so impactfully. I also like how I'm like, yeah, anyone else still listen to Stay Away by Muna? Really just kind of like showing my whole butt, kind of being like, <laughs> who else is gay and sad? Raise your hand. I bet it's more of you than I'd like to think. Mmm. Oh. That's something. Something. Why is... Why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm experiencing like a little dysphoria right now and I'm not really sure what's going on. Ooh, I'm uncomfortable. I'm gonna put black eyeliner on and mascara and then we will, we're gonna try on so many lip products right now. Okay, I'm gonna be, let's be so for real. I'm gonna try on so many lip products. Chapel Roan Vans, she made Good Luck Babe so hard to sing along to. She said, let me sing at the top of my register. Let me sing that with my full chest. Okay, back to the Finding Ferdinand lip balm. Sorry, I was looking at it. It's like kind of already gone. If you are a lip balm connoisseur, I don't think you'll really care about these. But if you're looking for something with like light cover, like light pigmentation for a lip color, then maybe, maybe. I don't know. I'm not really sure what I've done that makes is making my face feel off to me. Now I understand again, I made my eyes look like they were unwell and maybe that's just it. Maybe that's all it is. Also, if I do too much drop shadow, like eyeshadow underneath, that always weirds me out a little bit. Like I have issue with that because I just feel like it doesn't look right on my face. I don't think I like these Finding Ferdinand lip balms, but okay, so the first one I put on was the shade Lucky Cat, which was that purple shade. We'll swatch it again. We'll put it on the lips again. I will say this, it's not really looking bad on the dry patches of my lips, so it, it is a balm in a way where it is kind of gliding over that. Okay, so there's that. So this is the photo shoot red shade. This is the first time I put this one on my lips. It's not so bright. I mean, I knew it was sheer, but it was like, I was really worried that it was gonna read like super red. And I don't think I like this formula. Not hate that color though. It's giving the energy of like, you just, mm -mm -mm. what was I about to do with my hands, Tom? Think about you're on the internet. Uh, it's like whenever you like would eat a popsicle when you were little and you wanted your, you wanted your lips to be red, so you would kind of like, drag it on your lips. How am I supposed to demonstrate this? I don't think I can. Don't you mean that? Don't mean me. Mean me and Saladdle. I don't think I like those. And I hate to be so like immediate with my feeling on that. It's really, I've not really worn them that much, but I'm not a fan. I have this from Hourglass, which I stole from Khaki. It's the shade Tide. I will complain about this. I don't like this packaging. So it is cute and it, it, it does, you know, it feels luxe enough. It's not super heavy, but Hourglass's stuff tends to not be heavy. Case in point, this. But my issue with it is that the it always has to go back in the specific way that's stupid mama that's garbage i hate that it's a bad choice it is magnetic once it gets in there so like you know there's something to that and then let's put it on i'll show you the shade so it's a little bit of a concealer lip which is not something that i couldn't rock with this look considering it's like i basically look dead kind of the vibe of this look and it has like a vanilla scent. I've worn this a couple of times and it gave me the white ring of death pretty quickly all the times I've worn it. And for, I don't even know how much these cost. Again, this was like passed down to me from Khaki. So I, I really have no context for that. I just don't like the formula that much. And I'm sure it's expensive and I don't care for that. Then we have the two lip products from Sigma. The lip oil, which a lot of you have reported to me that you are very into, but it's just kind of like sheer. I don't even think I'm gonna apply it, but I did pull it out. But I do wanna apply this one. This is the lip 
Cream in the shade Begonia, which all of you told me that I need to give another chance whenever I first wore it. You were all like, no, Tom, it looks good on you. It's actually very similar to the Hourglass shade. Okay, I like it so much more this time. I think I was just, whenever I first interacted with this, I like really wasn't sure what to make of it. But okay, I understand. I understand where you were all coming from. I'm seeing it. I'm visualizing it. But I will say, I haven't worn this that much because I've been scared of it <laughs> because of the color of it. This isn't where we're ending with lip product, but I might take the last lip product off and put this one back on. However, I do think that the last lip product is going to go with it the best. This is from Sephora Collection and it's the shade a nine tan lines. So here's the sh here's the packaging, and then here's the color, and it has a little bit of green in it. And the first thing I thought of whenever I stole this from Khaki is that it would be close to a Royal Scandal. So I'm gonna swatch it next to that, a Royal Scandal from Gucci. And a Royal Scandal has been discontinued from Gucci, which is annoying. I did try to find it the other day and I even thought about buying a backup. I don't know who I turned into in that second. Here is the Sephora one and then here is a Royal Scandal from Gucci. So obviously the Royal Scandal is a lot darker, but they both, I think they're like sisters. They both have that little bit of, well, this one's actually a lot more green than this, but if you're into like a pukey baby poop lip color, this might be for you. I think, I don't know, Andromeda, if you're watching, I think that you would like this. Although I'm not a huge fan of the formula, it's given me the white ring of death pretty quickly. Ooh. I'm gonna spray my face, do I need to shake well? Shake bottle well. I know with setting sprays, it's more important to look for the shake well rather than foundations, which I'm really terrible at. But if there's any kind of like mattifying agent in here, I, I can't believe I've never tried this. Doesn't that feel, that feels bananas to me. Okay. Wow. Sprayer on that. Really nice. The smell of it. I don't think I like the smell of it. Ooh. I mean, it's not giving me the same finish as my beloved Fix Plus, but if it improved longevity of product, then I think that's okay. Just kind of smells a little bit like hairspray. But here's a final look. Do I like it? Do you like it? Do we like it? Like, where are we landing? Don't answer that. I hate when you answer that. <laughs> Don't tell me if you like it or not. <laughs> because even though I feel weird about it, when someone else says they feel weird about it, it just ruins my self-confidence and I just can't have that. I realize I'm putting myself out there on the internet, but I'm just saying like, not today, not on this look, honey, okay? Let's take a walk down memory lane. The first thing we used is the foundation, the bond, the face bond foundation from Urban Decay. I think it's really good. And I don't really know how, how it could become a problem for me, but it feels much more specific to me than the Lisa Eldridge one, which felt much less specific for me. Like, I feel like people with really dry skin probably won't like this, but if you have normal to oily skin and you are looking for like a soft matte finish, maybe, maybe. I mean, I obviously still have a lot more testing to do. This is like literally the first time I applied it. That was pretty, pretty impressed. I don't know why I'm saying that. I have had Urban Decay foundations in the past. The one that came in the rectangular one worked really well for me. And I, I think I either finished one or I got very close to finishing one of those. I can trust them, I think. I feel like I can trust them with complexion. I just feel like their, their releases are just kind of like boring recently, but they also, I will say, it did come in like a real PR package where like, the box it came in was shaped like this. So that was fun. I've never had one of those. But in the future, if they ever reach out to offer to send anything to me, I think if I can request, you know, less packaging, I probably will. But it was like fun to experience that for once, you know, and I, I don't get too many opportunities. I don't like the sponge. So Tiff said they wanted it if I didn't like it. It's, I just don't, the shape is so strange. <laughs> the shape is so strange, but it is nice and hefty and squishy. Like it's fun to touch, but... I don't know it would be worth anyone's money to do. It's like very interesting to touch. Like, I mean, it just feels like a beauty blender, if I'm being honest with you, but like the shape of it makes it like something fun. I'll let Tiff enjoy that. It's it just too much for my face. Have you ever seen those silent book reviews on Book Talk? I'm on Book Talk and I don't read that much, but it's like, and they'll just like point to it and they'll make a bunch of expressions. So that's what I'm gonna do. To be for fucking real, <laughs> I, this powder uh, was very nice and I'm very much looking forward to use it again. And I, you know, maybe it will replace my Charlotte Tilbury because my pores, like you can't see them, honey. 
Where are they? Where'd they come from? Where'd they go? I'm not the one you should ask. The Sigma blushes. I think the cream blush is an event. Pashmina, obviously it's now has stuff on top of it, is an event. Uh, the Tiger Lily blush, it's not for me. I, I just, I think Sigma was kind enough to send me PR and they just happened to send me the shade. It's not that I think it's like a bad formula. I just don't like the color. It's giving like that NARS orgasm energy and that's just not my energy. I'm celibate. And then all of the lip products, the Finding Ferdinand Lip Balm Trio. I don't even know if it's still in stock because this was like a limited edition thing. It also came in really beautiful packaging, but I think that was just the pack. They, they come in a trio. I think that's just how they come. They were also really pretty. The packaging's really lovely for these. Really, really lovely. So like, I, I appreciate that, but... I don't know. I wouldn't spend money on these. I would, like, if I would have bought these, I'd be disappointed in them. But I also very picky about which lip balms I'm gonna spend money on. I'll wear a tinted lip balm, but it's not what I'm reaching for first. The Hourglass lipstick is really a bummer. It's like, not, I'm not into it at all. The lip cream had a little bit of a redemption arc. I'm gonna play with it a couple more times before I film that video of the reckoning. And then the lip oil, I I do, I have used a couple of times and I, I do quite like it. And then the lipstick from Sephora. It's a very cool color, shade nine, tan lines in the color stories or the lip stories. So if you've been looking for something like this, I think this will be a good place to get it. And also the Sephora collection is not super expensive. And if I post this video before the sale is over, it would be 30% off right now. So I think these are like $9 or something. I don't know. I don't think they're that expensive. So you could grab it if you were interested in this lip color. I just don't think I really love this formula too much, but I'll keep wearing it. I'm, I'm so, I'm just so sad of Royal Scandals. Like you can't buy it anymore. That makes me so sad. Uh, the All Nighter Setting Spray, like, I mean, I can't speak to how indestructible, I can't speak to how indestructible my makeup might be, but you know, my, it's not transferring. So that could be the powder, the foundation or the setting spray, but it does, you know, it gives that feeling. My face doesn't feel tight. Other than the spray, spray being very nice, the smell didn't really love. Could, can you believe that I made this look from this palette? I mean, I guess you can once you see the inside of it, but like, again, I always think about this as like a pinks only palette. But it's not. I really actually like the eye look. It's really sparkly. It doesn't look as sparkly on camera. Hold on. Okay. Get into it. The sparkles in there really give indie girl realness. Like they're giving like indie sparkly shadows. What a successful little journey we went on. I wasn't really sure where we were gonna head whenever this video started, but I'm glad we ended up where we did. A lot of hits coming in the hits keep coming in the hits keep coming in the hits keep coming. Hits keep coming in the hits keep coming. Anyway, I need to wrap up this video. If you are new to my channel and you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. My name is Hope Mess Tom. I really appreciate you taking the time to spend some time with me. What I like to do on my channel is help myself and help you build the habit of being more discerning about the makeup that we're purchasing. I'm very critical of new makeup releases. I'm very critical of brands in general whenever they release something that I think is garbage. And I try to spend most of my videos like loving the stuff in my collection already as opposed to celebrating new things. You know, a, some of this stuff has appeared on my channel before. Some of this stuff was brand new. I do receive PR. I also do buy things for review occasionally. So it's not strictly just loving my makeup, but I also love testing new formulas and telling you what might be worth it whenever you use something up. So that's what I do here. So I would love to have you subscribe if you're not already. Make sure you like this video. I'm on Patreon and I have channel memberships. They're both the same, no matter which one you were to join, if you were to join either, which you don't have to join either. They're the same. Like I said, it's a completely optional thing. You don't have to join my Patreon or be a channel member. I'm just so happy you're here watching, sharing, liking, and commenting on the video. That's the best way to support me or any other content creator you love. I want to take a moment to thank all of my current patrons and members. You're the absolute best. I really appreciate you. And that wraps up the video. Remember to follow your hoe and you'll find me. I'll see you in a video very soon. Go forth. Tits out. Bye-bye.